Howdy there, cow folks, and welcome back to 10 insane details you probably didn't know in Red Dead Redemption 2. First clip on this list shows the actual realistic behavior of horses in the game as they roll around and take little dirt or mud baths, much like they will do in real life. In this next clip, while playing cards at camp, you can hear Arthur mention how he remembers Susan and Dutch being in a re relationship at one time. Playing poker till all hours. You on Dutch's knee most of the time, from what I remember. Oh, probably. Though mostly just so he could see my cards, I'm sure. <laughs> Long time ago now. All right, what you got? This next clip is probably my favorite on the list, and it shows Micah trying to sway Mary Beth into getting into a dance with him, to which she swiftly rejects him in the most boss way possible. Will you dance with me, Miss Mary Beth? No, I will not. You're... I got two left feet. I'm not a monster, miss. No, of course you're not. You're not that interesting. Very funny. In this next clip we can see at the beginning of chapter 3 how hopeful Dutch is at finding gold within the two families that they are attempting to swindle and how much he likes being in Lemoyne. Although Arthur is able to clearly see right past all of his BS. Arthur never said he'd been robbed. What do you think of the place? I don't know. So far it seems okay I guess. I think that there is rich pickings for some carpetbaggers like us. <laughs> is that what we are, is it? Avenging your father's death after 30 years? There's gold, Arthur. Gold. If you say so. In this next clip we can see Jack attempting to play with John as a Hector and Achilles type reenactment to which John rejects him in the most asshole way possible. But by the end of the game we can see in chapter 6 that John changes his life around and tries to be a good father and finally ends up playing with Jack the game that he wanted to early on in the story. What'd you call me? I'll be Achilles, you be Hector. I don't read none of that nonsense. It's easy. You swing your sword, like this! <laughs> now ain't such a good time, kid. Guess it never is. Don't you say a word, Morgan. Well, that sure is a scene from an ancient tragedy, all right. Yeah, you go annoy someone else. <laughs> Gonna get you! Two orphans! Playing at happy families. Hey. What a touching scene. Go to hell. You know, Jack, Dutch thought your pa was gold once, too, till he realized he was just yelling. Leave my son the hell alone. You got something to say? Say it to me, you son of a bitch. Oh, look, the rest of the old guard. Cherish every last moment with your son, John. Don't listen to Micah, okay? Well, why is he being mean? Just ignore him. This is one of my favorite hidden side quests that you can do in the game. And it happens in Chapter 2 when Pearson is by the chuck wagon having himself a drink. And if your cores are low, he'll ask you to bring him a rabbit so that he can make you a special stew. And in doing so, he'll actually craft you a denim jacket that you can't find anywhere else in the game. And not only that, it looks super nice and complements Arthur really well. Mr. Pearson? You all right there, Mr. Morgan? Sure. You look a little peaky. Peaky? Peaky? Tell you what, you find me a rabbit and I'll make you my special soup. Put the hair on your chest, get you feeling perfect. I just need a rabbit? 
It's my special rabbit soup. It's a work of art. I learned the recipe in the Indies. Riddled with scurvy I was then, one bowl. And I was fine. Thank you. <clears throat> Morgan. Got Thank a rabbit you. for you. Ah, perfect. Thank you. I'll get started on that soup. And for this next clip, I, uh... I, I don't know. I, I don't have words. Just see for yourself. I can't say any more than that. Well, besides whatever in the fuck that was, you can actually find a scarecrow outside that you can steal this unique hat from. Even though it's quite ugly, you can add that to your collectibles if you're on a mission on uh, finding everything that you can keep in the game. And then besides that, if you had a little bit ways north, I believe, or northeast, uh, you can find this sheep similar to the one found, um, well, you know, in there, that will have a gold ring wrapped around its neck. I'm not even sure what in the hell is going on here, and I don't even know that I want to find out. So, uh, if anybody has any idea what this is referencing, uh, just let me know in the comments. Or don't. And for this next detail, you can actually go to the place where you and Javier commit the home robbery uh, called Chess Porter. And as many channels have already uh, pointed out, especially the strange man, there will be a people there that talk in their own weird dialect and kind of made up language, which consists of the English language. But depending on what time of day you approach them, or if you approach them multiple times, there will be different scenes and dialogues that you can hear while visiting. And then of course there's a third option where you can go there, like I mentioned earlier, with Javier to do the home robbery as a side mission. You see that girl at the market? Googling at me again. Googling at what a raggedy squirreler you is. <laughs> you see when I get a woman like that, don't you? Frazzle dipping all the night. Frazzle dipping your little pullywag more like. We has that one we keeps in the woods. Happy was boiling when he sees her, don't you? <laughs> oh, what the hickory is her name now? <laughs> Digs her up an ass, don't you? <laughs> and next run to market, I combs my hair all flowy like I says to the girl, Good morning. You watch now. I tell you every time, no yakking in the market. Newt and Edie takes the wagon now, don't you? Now shut your gulpers. And do it right on that ginseng. We makes a right tangle of that, Mal. We surely stuck here like hog pins now. <laughs> here. I don't want no different. But you, me, Ma Finney, we full grown now. The Outlanders will blandish you. Surely they will. Now you got to keep for the awakening. But on 20 years we wait. We got to keep clean now, don't you? Now go and watch the shed, you dippy plimic. For Pappy spunks his top again. Any folk steps on this soil, they don't leave. Okay now. Okay, Edie. I need you to be the tall man here, Finny, now, don't you? Mal and Newt, they sees you veer and squirrely, they veer squirrely likewise. When they fails me, you fails me. 
don't bend to the blandishing, because there's nothing but damnation out there. We sells to him, don't you? But we keeps apart, like we always keeps. The outlands in the shadows, like I says it is. We're free and freer still, surely, in the world to come. So no more of this dippy yakking, you hear? I hears. Go on with you now. Sleep deep. Sleep deep, Papa. And while on that same subject, as doing this mission, as in the previous clip has shown, you can do the same home robbery mission with Javier during Chapter 3 if you happen to miss it during Chapter 2. But after Chapter 3, it closes and you are no longer able to complete the mission or even uh, initiate it. So? Well, so these boys thought they were sitting on a lot of cash. They're highway robbers, kidnappers apparently, but they're well hidden in the woods. That sounds pretty dubious. Of course, uh, yeah, it's dubious, but there ain't much risk of getting caught. Okay, then. Let's go take a look. Exactly. Just take a look. It's up north, on the other side of the river from Valentine. Best way there is through Cumberland Falls, though. You know it? Sure, more or less. Although it doesn't quite align with the timing of Arthur's contraction of tuberculosis as this side mission can be completed before he does the debt collecting mission for Mr. Strauss where he approaches Thomas Downs and as we all know from the story gets infected that way but this is actually the scene where he has his first major cough or at least concerning cough. Sounds good. This next detail you can see whenever you take on the side quest for the Appleseed Timber Company whenever the foreman asks you to exterminate some wolves that have been attacking his workers. But there's a lot more to this side mission other than just seeing the two corpses of the wolf attack victims. One of them you can see has a pretty gruesomely smashed face while the other has a head missing. This is a reference to Ichabod Crane in the story Sleepy Hollow. If you loot one of the bodies, you can see this letter that was written to one of the dead men that is a rejection letter from the St. Luke's Academy. And at the bottom of the letter, you can see it's from Professor Crane. In the story of Sleepy Hollow, the Headless Horseman throws his head at Ichabod Crane's face with such huge impact. This is representative in the two bodies you see here, as in one of the bodies being decapitated and the other having a severely smashed face, as mentioned earlier.